Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode zero slash character creation for Bubblegum Shoe, a game I've been wanting to play for a very long time. And uh, joining me are two intrepid sleuths, uh, Marty and Cece. That's what they're called in this game. Don't worry about it. You don't have to ever refer to yourself as a sleuth, but Thank you. I will. <laughs> Um, so like all of our other Session Zeros, um, I want to go down, uh, talk about inspirations a little bit, the tone we want to do, um, character ideas, and then I have, uh, settings we can go through and talk about briefly. Um, yeah. So, uh, hi, I'm here. I've always been here. <coughs> And I will continue to be here. Um, I love detective stories. And my main inspirations for this specifically, I read the Hardy Boys a lot as a kid. The Boxcar Children. Uh, Scooby-Doo. Loved Scooby-Doo. Uh, the Wishbone Mysteries, which was a spinoff of the Wishbone TV show. Except he solved mysteries instead of putting himself into Romeo and Juliet. I think they also aped famous detective stories. Uh, uh, Veronica Mars uh, which just got rebooted quilled um, mm -hmm. I haven't watched any of that yet but um, and then adult mysteries those are the teenage little kid mysteries um, I have a love hate relationship with J.K. Rowling's Cormoran Strike um, <laughs> uh, the D.C. Smith books are really good uh, I just finished two books by Jane Harper, which were excellent. Uh, I was on an Agatha Christie kick recently, Sherlock Holmes, Nick and Nora, and uh, the Discworld Watch series are also some of my favorite mysteries. Um, so, I just listed a lot of stuff. Marty, how about you? <laughs> oh, not nearly that many. Um, again, just by being an old-ass man, I am fairly classically trained. Um in a lot of the black and whites, my parents are huge. Everything. If there's a mystery in it, they've read it, and it's, I've been around it. My mom was just reading one called, like, The Bagel Mysteries or something. It's about a bagel maker. She solves crimes. Um, all the Sue Graftons, uh, V.I. Warshawski. Uh, but, um, no, Encyclopedia Brown, always my jam. Uh, I just invoked Life is Strange, which is much more of a supernatural thriller. But um, yeah, I I like super powered teenagers a bunch. I like vigilante teenagers a bunch, I like all my Robins and my Stephanie Browns. Sorry, Stephanie's Brown. There you go. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm in the I'm in the right wheelhouse. Nick and Nora are always a classic, though I prefer them as Elongated Man and Sue Dibney. Um, you know, but yeah, I have the right temperament, but I don't have the the longest pedigree. Except, man, I read the shit out of Encyclopedia Brown. The mini mysteries. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, Scooby Doo. The lesson of Scooby Doo is that all adults lie. Yeah, and yep. I just like uh, snooping uh, girls where they don't belong. It's a good trope for me. Yeah, Velma is obviously the best character on that show oh my god she's the best <laughs> um really everyone else is there to make the episodes 30 minutes or else she'd solve them at five yeah well it's, that's also why they take her glasses yeah, away they, it's her scooby and shaggy <laughs> bumble their way interfering with her and then there's you know 10 minutes of hijinks and then she's holding hands with the ghost for half the episode <laughs> Did you guys ever watch the glass. Mystery Inc. TV show that came out? Yes. Like, not too long. That was so surprisingly good. strong meta plot. <laughs> surprisingly strong. Also about adults lying, though. It really it's yep. stuck the landing. Yeah, adults are the worst. They really uh, are. Cece. Hi. So uh, obviously, I also am a Scooby Scooby Dooer. Um, uh, as a kid, I feel like a lot of kids in my generation grew up with, like, the Hardy Boys, Boxcar kids kind of genre of book, and I was definitely one of those reading all of that schnaz. Um, also, I really, really like 
a lot of like cop dramas and stuff um like svu um i've grown up my dad was a cop so he likes to watch a lot of older cop dramas um so i watched a fair amount of those in my day um and then for like teenagers and stuff i love 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 the genre of like teenage group of kids goes to try and solve supernatural thing so like your stranger things like your i guess life is strange technically kind of falls into that kind of category um earth to echo et those kind of dealios yeah Yeah. uh i'm actually not a huge community fan (laughs) okay well we can stop being friends off the stream let's just make it through this (laughs) (laughs) i it's because i watched it too much as a kid it was like one of those ones that like the babysitter put on like way too often Oh, I see. So, that can be a bad taste. Yeah, I, it's just one of those that I'm like, okay, but I've like, seen it. Like, and plus, that older brother grows out to be Thanos and <laughs> doesn't go well. Yeah. But yeah, those are kind of my inspirational things. Uh, okay, awesome. Um, so, let's talk about setting before tone because setting can lead into tone i think mm-hmm. sure um so the default setting of um this we can build together it's drewsbury we can change the name if we don't like it but we part of the character creation is building part of the town so we can um build it together and we still will but that's kind of the generic one it's a small city um close enough to a major metropolitan area that um there's still crime but far enough away that it's its own community Mm -hmm. so um the one i keep picturing because my wife lived there for a couple years when she was in grad school is bloomington illinois it's probably a city of about forty thousand people it's a college town it's close enough to chicago and indianapolis and st louis that there's probably a decent amount of crime there, but it's still a also fairly nice, safe place to live that, you know, it's not like somebody's getting murdered every week. Um, like in some TV shows like Longmire, where population of that town's like 3,000 and there's a murder every week. And why do you keep reelecting him? I was thinking murder, she wrote. <laughs> or murder, she wrote, where that whole town yeah. is dead. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> That town is mostly ghost by the end, yeah. right? <laughs> Jessica Fletcher might be a serial killer. I think that's yeah. the, probably the real answer. <laughs> um, so there was that. I have been, for whatever reason, thinking of Wildwood, New Jersey a lot. Uh, just because okay. I kind of think um, like an off-season shore town would make a cool place to have a stream. It doesn't have to be for this sh- one. but For sure. Yeah. Um, and that's just the generic, there's no real conceit to it. So the ones that start adding the drifts, as they were, are called. Let's see. Silvery Moon Terrace. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, the, so the first one is Bel Air's Falls. Uh, a town somewhere in the upper Midwest or maybe New England where dark and destructive magics roil beneath the placid surface. Um, it's named after a young adult horror writer I am not for, well, I am tangentially familiar with named John Belairs, who wrote The House with, the, with a Clock in Its Walls, which was recently made into a movie, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. uh, books I have never heard of. Um... I don't mean to embarrass you. I believe it was named after the Prince of Bel-Air. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he was very fresh. <laughs> um, That's what I hear. Um, <clears throat> uh, so it's it's kind of horror-y, um, Stranger Things-y, Stephen King-y. Um, you can skew this one younger, so it's like middle schoolers, and there are specific, slightly different rules for middle schoolers as opposed to high schoolers. Uh, but it doesn't have to be. Um, it's magic is real, 
and uh, this town is messed up. Uh, I think it was Erie, Indiana was a show that was on the Disney yeah. Channel or Nickelodeon. That would be Bel Air's <laughs> Falls. Okay. So, so there's that one. Uh, the next one is, and I know this will have some instant appeal to both of you, it's Danvers High, <laughs> which is superheroes. It's um, either, I, I, I think you can do it one of two ways. It's either their secret superheroes, Tim Drake, Stephanie Brown, mm-hmm. something like that, or you are going to Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. Yeah. Um, and Did either of you read uh, Gotham Academy? Yes. I didn't. I think I own the first three trades, and I still haven't read it. But it, lo- uh, it looked right up my alley. Obviously, it is. That's that's immediately what I pictured was like Gotham Academy. Oh, there was Paul Dini did a live action show. Oh yeah, that was very good along these lines, and it got canceled because it was doing too well with girls. Hollywood's great, you guys. Girls don't buy yeah. action figures or whatever their stupid argument was. That was their stupid argument. Yeah. That was 100%. Oh, what the hell was it? I'll, I'll remember it. I would shout it out like a crazy person yeah. 12, 20 minutes from now. Uh, only tangentially related, but it, come, it relates to something we talked about earlier. The reason why Wishbone was canceled was because it had no merchandising potential. And how the hell do you just not make a stuffed animal version of Wishbone in all of the costumes from the show? How is that not merchandising potential? Yeah. Uh, or you I could mean, do little collectible figures. Yeah. PBS was uh, dumb. Tower Prep. Tower Prep was the name of that show. And it had kind of like a weird prisoner vibe. <laughs> like you were stuck at that school oh, sure. in a way <laughs> that you could not escape. It, it was really... had a neat premise. Um... If we do Danvers High, I have to go get another book so we can learn about powers. But other than that, we can just run it as is. If you guys were into Danvers High, but also we do have masks, which we can bring back um, right. as our yeah, yeah. teenage yeah. superhero thing. Um, uh, the next one is Diamond City. And Diamond City is a struggling urban neighborhood in the dystopian present or near future. Uh, the sleuths can be anyone who has reason to keep their heads down around the authorities. Uh, too real. Yeah, it's a little real. But, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to veto that one early. Okay, I... Oh, thank you. A little thank too you. on the note. I did not want to do this one. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> but the... The, you can do a, a slight... The first one they list is undocumented immigrants, which is too real. But you mm-hmm. could also do vampires, mutants. You could make it something a little different. Yeah, that is just but... a metaphor for our shitty times. I feel like, okay, I feel yeah. like I'm firm on passing. <laughs> Skipping that one right now. Uh, Kimball Middle School, you're just middle schoolers. So there are different sure. rules. Um... Now, is that aiming for a kids on bikes kind of like? Yeah, yeah, everyone gets a vehicle. Yep, cool. Uh, and it's it's a bike. Um, you, oh, I'm sorry, you get a sweet ride. Nice. Oh, sick. Bike, skateboard, <laughs> scooter. Um, Coverboard. Fuck yeah, I'm doing kickflips. <laughs> uh, See, so yeah, uh, what? Oh, and you get to run away from fights without taking penalties. Sure. Because you shouldn't be in fights. <laughs> yeah. You're 12. You can disengage as a free action. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's that one. Uh, there is Kingsfield Academy. Mm, uh, Ilchwood. Ilchwood. Uh, Kingsf- Kingsfield Academy is a private boarding school dominating its small town. The Academy is rigor is a rigorously selected meritocracy. The best of the best compete to join the first year class. Those few who succeed are guaranteed a full scholarship. So it's not necessarily about like upper class rich kids. Um, although certainly you could do that because one could argue that those people have all the advantages in life. Therefore, they can buy a better education that guarantees that you can do it. But yeah. it is it's <clears throat> like cutthroat your friends are also your enemies because half the graduating class doesn't move on. 
you know, right. you know, so many kids kill themselves a year under pressure. Like it's the worst parts of school. <laughs> like yeah. it's pressure. Um, uh, oh, and here's the last one, which I think is both funny and terrible. Uh, Kingsfield emphasizes self-reliance. Students earn the right to have visitors, including parents. Ew. You don't okay. get to see you don't get to see your father because somebody got a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um. Okay. The rowing team did really crappy on Sunday. Someone doesn't have parents, as far as we're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Only good students get to have parents. <laughs> Winners have parents. Now do a lap. Losers get, <laughs> losers get to cry into their pillow, waifu. <laughs> uh, um, uh, the next one is Ruby Hollow. It's Scooby Doo. It's not That's fun. It's not even right. pretending to not be Scooby Doo. You get a sidekick. Nice. Um, uh, although this one does have the conceit of. But if you want it to be supernatural, just make it supernatural. I mean, it doesn't have to literally be Scooby Doo, but sure, sure. <clears throat> um, and then Strange Hill Scout two two one, which this one's I I can't figure out what this one is trying to ape. Like other than yeah, I don't even know what it's like. Troop Beverly Hills, I guess. I don't really oh. know. It's but it's 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 because it's not quite that. But it's it's not necessarily because when I saw Strange Hill, I was like, oh, it's supernatural stuff again. It's not. It's like so. It's not Gravity Falls. I, it might not... be Gravity Falls. That might okay. be what it's going for. It doesn't say that in here, and usually it does say what it's like aiming right. for. Um, but it, you can earn badges. There's a list of badges. Um, I mean that's fun. Yeah, it's it's fun, um, but it's it's pretty much just middle schoolers who have they don't go to school. They you go to this scout camp, um, and they earn mystery badges. Yes, yeah. And then the final one is Veronica Base Mars. I was wondering if you were. Um, just avoiding it. No, I guess they're listed <laughs> alphabetically. Um, so it's bubble gum shoe in space. <laughs> in the not so distant future, uh, we've landed on Mars, and we have a colony there. And they decided to let it's like the Starship Enterprise. There are families there, so you're a high schooler on Mars who solves mysteries. Mars mysteries. <laughs> Mars mysteries. And I'm from Earth. Okay. Um so any of those immediately jump out? Do you just kinda want to do baseline, Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys, Veronica Mars, or do you want to do one of the ones that has a little a little extra something? A little extra dip to it. Um the ones that kind of jump out to me are either Kingsfield Academy, Ruby Hollow, or the Strange Hilt Troop, was it? The Mystery Boy Scout Troop, Boy mm -hmm. Scout Troop thing. Mm -hmm. Those were kind of the, my top three, just kind of listening to them. So, sorry, wait. It was Kingsfield? Mm hmm. Ruby Hollow? Uh huh. And Strange Hill? Yeah. And how do you feel about just vanilla bubblegum shoe? I mean, yeah, that'd be fine, too. Okay. I kind of like the little bit of extra added flavor on there, but, like, if he decided to not go with that, then I, I mean, I would like that probably above some of the other choices. Yeah, I really, I liked Bel Air's Falls a bit, but I also kind of like that Wildwood idea. Of, like, people live at these shore towns that everyone else just visits, and so what's, and you could either 
the setting could be when the tourists are there or when they're not. You know, you're either solving a mystery of some drifter murdered a hobo or, you know, tourist season's about to start. And and I think you might even be able to match that with Bel Air's Falls as mm -hmm. far as like people are coming for the leaves again. Meanwhile, there's Cthulhu's. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the wild one one was also another one on the top. I'm sorry, I just forgot to write that one down. Okay. Well, there there are a lot of options here. Mm -hmm. I do, I also like Kingsfield. That's definitely going for a thing. Because another thing I wrote down early before we started listing things, I like being in a high school in a college town. Because then there's big kid mysteries that mm -hmm. are also kind of a, and you're kind of stuck mm -hmm. in between. And I kind of feel like Kingsfield might. You're lower classmen, but you're trying for this kind of collegiate level success um so that matches a flavor i was kind of looking for going into it i don't see it as a drew's bury. i see it more as an andy's bury. Mm -hmm. sure. Drew just sounds I, weird it's not great <laughs> if we're being honest <laughs> um like i can see the appeal of a danvers high we have a superhero game for teenagers that we already play my yeah. worry with Bel Air's Falls a little bit is that we also have a Cthulhu game that we already play. And while it's not explicitly Cthulhu, it is kind of creepy horror mm. as a backdrop. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of my thought with the Veronica Mars one. Was since right. Like, we were telling... I got two space games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I do have a note under that. It would be different than our other two space shows because it is greatly focused on colonial life. Right. And um, less so on space travel, but it we do have two sci-fi shows that we want to add. We've got two sci-fi shows. Um, so for just trying to avoid redundancy, and I'm I'm good with a straight up. We go to high school in blah blah blah. High. Um, Ruby Hollow has a ridiculous flavor, but I would probably say Bellers Falls, Kingsfield, and then Ruby Hollow is my rough order. Uh, but we at least have two in common there that I think can probably narrow in pretty pretty well. Oh, I didn't hate the strange hills. No, see, I'm not helping if I keep saying I like all of them. So, <laughs> uh, But the scout's idea did, I could see some juice there too. So I can't lose. Um, we I think, have narrowed down basically nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Kins Kingsfield is unique and slightly uncomfortable mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. yeah. to what we like do. The, I kind of like the possibilities of the like different angles that it could present. Especially yeah, well, and I, since like, a lot of reading over this system very briefly, a lot of it seems like very like socially interaction based. Yeah. And, and it sounds so like a, that... Sorry. <laughs> no, no. It sounds like a perfect place for like actual crimes. Sure. Like someone yeah. murdered another student. Because yeah. why? <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, yeah. It's much better than who's selling bootleg bubblegum or whatever. <laughs> well, I, I that would, we would get into tone for that. But the, even the sample mystery that's in here, it's like, who stole my bike? And then some of the factions in it are like meth heads. Like, it gets oh. real. Like, <laughs> yeah, it sure. can get real. Like, Oh, so it is Indiana. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so. But they don't show you on Stranger Things. Is all the method. Yeah. Okay, so Kingsfield, Ruby Hollow, were the two that were most, or the two that were in common between both years, and then Strange Hill troop at Bel Air's Falls, which granted we could combine into one. <laughs> that might be oh, yeah. yielding a lily, I, but even Ruby Hollow and Bel Air's Falls, it would just be a goofier version of mm -hmm. it, I think, a little bit. I I think there's probably some crossover there. And there might be some supernatural elements to Kingsfield. There's some eyes wide shut, like weird skull and bones shit that could mm -hmm. happen there. I mean, I'm imagining that Kingsville Academy is in a giant, spooky-looking mansion campus thing. Oh, so almost certainly. Definitely. Almost certainly. They have definitely a Definitely have like a possibility of like 
ghosts and other spooky supernatural stuff. Um, yeah, people doing satanic rituals to pass oh. their tests. Yeah, I I went to a college that had a castle on it, and the castle was not terribly old for castles. There were so many ghost stories associated with it. You're like, yeah, this is like 150 <laughs> years old. Like, okay, guys, it's very easy to trace everyone who ever lived here back. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I like the appeal of playing like a proper rich girl. I have a, a canned character for that in mind, but also playing the poors, like mm-hmm. playing someone who's barely here and needs this. Yeah, um, the scholarship kids. Yeah, like that has a, a drastic appeal and also has a strong Life is Strange flavor, which... Mm-hmm. Um, which, Andy, you have not played? I have not, no. So you can't be swayed by it. That's good. <laughs> you wouldn't be doing it on purpose, whatever you did. Um, I, can you make... Um, can you give us more details about Ruby Hollow? Make a stronger sure. pitch to see if that sways me off my spot. Because I'm really starting to lean more and more towards Kingsfield. It sounds awful. Okay. I mean, if if you guys both want, King, I'm I'm into Kingsfield, so yeah. But does Kingsfield come with an animal sidekick? Uh, it doesn't. Yeah. Okay. See. Uh, so see, we're not. <laughs> he didn't pass our uh, physics exam, so we don't get to have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Winners have dogs. <laughs> um, okay, so Ruby Hollow, um, sidekicks. Sidekicks are valuable to have along when solving a mystery. <laughs> and they help lighten the mood of play uh, the sleuths build the sidekick as a team defining the personality and standard behavior of their sidekick so there's a guidance for role playing uh, it's great to start with a main personality shtick is the raccoon hungry all the time does the talking <laughs> does the talking dolphin always have a smart alec comment how's the Flipper was a straight-up mystery show. They are not out of bounds yet. <laughs> um, the sidekick is a shared resource with a pool of sidekick points. Uh, you guys get to build the sidekick like a little character. Um, when you're playing and the sidekick happens to be around, any sleuth in the group can spend points in the sidekick's pool instead of their own. Uh, maybe you have a big dog who can croon the tunes of 80s cartoon theme songs and his score in pop culture just happens to be a little better than yours. You could pull a point from his sheet to have him howl out the Thundercats theme in time for you to impress your hopefully maybe someday boyfriend. I mean... That sounds great. (laughs) All of that sounds great. Did it? Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Um... And Thundercats was written by the In the Actor Studio guy, right? Was it? Is that a trivia question really? everybody knows? Um, yeah. I know the Defenders of the Universe theme, Defenders, was written by Stanley. Nice. That's and that's a great theme song. If, if, if not familiar, I'll post it later. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, James Lipton. Did James Lipton really do da 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 Is this going to be like the? Did Michael Jackson really write the Sonic? Is it Sonic Two? Music? One of the it's, Sonic. Games. I think it's Sonic Three, and he didn't. But then they wanted him to, and then they just made it sound like he did. Yeah. Ugh, this is one of those scrolling articles that's never going to give me the answer. No, it's not. The composer of the Thundercats theme song is a man named Bernie Hoffer. All right. Well, poor debunked. Bernie, poor Bernie Hoffer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Staged by fucking Lipton again. <laughs> Lipton. Submitted a backstory for Bernie. Who, who cares what your favorite swear words are? <laughs> Get to it. <laughs> You're wasting Mr. Penn's time. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, that sounds fucking adorable. I 
one like also positive to doing Ruby Follow is we only have two salutes. And mm-hmm. so having a sidekick might help us out. For sure. Uh, and raccoons do little human stuff with their hands. Oh shit. Okay. Here's the thing. If we do Ruby Hollow, it's a raccoon and it's AU uh, dance lap and Bianti, I think. <laughs> I think. I mean, I don't see a way around it. There are probably several ways around it, but I'm just saying I don't see one. Um, so I, gu- I guess it's a matter of do we want this to be more hijinks and shenanigans or do we want this to be this could get gross socially. <laughs> that's that's the line. There's that's the that's right. There's, there's no in between. between. There's nothing in between. <laughs> that's a really tough decision. It is. But honestly, I really like both. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the tough part. I, I like I like the darkness inherent in the kind of uh, Kingsfield idea. I I love playing at that level. Again, there's not like there's not a student I can imagine that I don't see being an interesting play there. Mm-hmm. Um, it does present man. a lot more like immediate options. Yeah, like I already know like. There, I think mood sets itself. I think we've already answered our mood question uh, pretty quickly if we go to Kingsfield. Um, but man, the other sounds like we won't stop laughing. And I don't know, are, are we are we the dearth for humor? Not really. We're having a lot of good fun on all the streams right now. But even our so-called serious sci-fi show has been pretty fun so far. Mm-hmm. Um Sorry, my real life sidekick is uh, begging for attention right now. I understand. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. Is the idea of a stream that's all comedy, is that like, is that tiresome in any way? Or mm. look, I'm, I'm, whatever you guys want to do, I'm on board. I will make fun of Scooby Doo all day. <laughs> well, I, there is. There's almost a more immediate worry than that. That that is that's an excellent question on its surface. But also, like, if we're having a foo for all over here about our little raccoon sidekick, and you're like, "But guys, there is a missing child. Like, (laughs) are we going to address the missing child, or what's happening there?" Oh, but he does people things, (laughs) and we're starting a food fight in the cafeteria (laughs) to cover for our raccoon's ill digestion. It's like a, a. Thematically, they might not. The mystery itself will have to be some dumb crap, and is that necessarily? No, it'll all be rewarding, or <laughs> I'll be amusement park land schemes. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> but I mean, even even they can take like a Keith Giffen, Peter David turn on a dime kind of, and the kid is dead. He's dead. Is the raccoon still funny? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> your raccoon's next. <laughs> yeah. And in the gritty 90s reboot, it's the raccoon that did it. Yeah. Um, it's got a little bandit mask and everything. Yeah. I don't know what you guys were expecting. They're pests. <laughs> they're unclassifiable by scientists, and they're pests. <laughs> Are they it? rodents? Are they bears? They still haven't decided. It's some kind of cat bear. Run. <laughs> I don't, you're as much a player in this. We need a tiebreaker. What, uh, what are you yeah. looking for there, Andrew? <sighs> oh, boy. I uh, say this is the only time you get to play to run uh, Pebble Gumshoe. Which one would you rather? Run? Okay. Let me... Oh, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it is the Pressure's only on. time I get to run Bubble Gumshoe, I would get rather the, the do... the other one into the sun. 
<laughs> oh, uh, well, I'm going to have a sentence after this. If it's the only time I get to play Bubble Gum Shoe, I think I would rather do Kingsfield. Mm-hmm. That being said, the second time I play Bubble Gum Shoe, I want it to be Ruby Hollow. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like I want to, I want to do a weird Scooby Doo adventure. Um, I because I loved Scooby Doo so much as a kid, so much so that, like we kind of talked about with Goonies earlier, so much so that I'm pretty sure I'm sick of it now. Like, I don't think I could watch it and sure, find sure. any enjoyment in it. Um, oh, although man, apparently look Mystery, Mystery Inc. Inc. was good. It, it, did that, is that the one that had Matthew Lillard in it as Shaggy again? Uh, yeah. yeah, Matthew Lillard has been staying Shaggy since since those movies. It's a real good Shaggy. Except for, except for the latest one, they cast somebody else and they didn't tell him and he got yeah. real pissy yeah. about Ooh, it. Ooh, I'd be mad. Yeah. I'd be mad. That guy throws his voice out on purpose for that role. Yeah. Yeah. And f- um, Frank Welker is still Fred somehow. <laughs> is that true? Somehow. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Listen, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, all right. Well, then I say for the for the two of us as super sleuths, let's do Kingsfield. Because I also think that once some of the rest of this Discord sees this episode and is like, Scooby-Doo was an option, <laughs> we might have a better chance of getting a full Scooby mystery van. like. Yeah, that's true. Of characters. So, and I have a town here in Indiana that I could send you, Andrew. That I think would be a perfect setting for that. Okay, it's called Santa Claus, Indiana. It's mm. got a holiday themed theme park in it, and the entire thing is themed around Santa Claus being like the mascot of the the town. It's real good. Man, that is perfect <laughs> for a land grab. <laughs> <laughs> a couple broken down roller coasters, some people dressed as evil elves. Be a real shame if something happened to Mrs. Claus, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh man, I'll bet you there is an official Santa Claus in that town too. Oh yeah, there yeah. Is. Oh, that would be a good mystery too. Because <laughs> around here, it's a lot of Revolutionary War founding fathers crap, as can be imagined, in and around the Philadelphia area. And we have like official Ben Franklins. We have a rank of Ben Franklin's mm-hmm. and if the first Ben Franklin can't make it the second guy's getting the call or there's going to be hell to pay <laughs> it is an elaborate cast system okay. so, and plus that way we can play roommates whether we're together or at odds or something it's mm-hmm. just kind of like and then the mystery breaks on us or something Okay. So. Uh, we can still play AU Dance Lab of Vianti by the way it's not preclude it was, uh... I was imagining them in prep school uniforms. And yes. Like that imagery. Uh, Vianti's going to get sent to the vice principal's office a lot of, that's not okay. You can't <laughs> do that to a school uniform. <laughs> um, okay. How am I getting away with it? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Turn my it. jacket inside out. <laughs> I don't know. It turns out if you just turn these skirts down at the waist several times, they get shorter. And fast. <laughs> Um, well, you'll be sitting next to him then. <laughs> might be how we went. Um, <laughs> so, um, so there aren't too many rules changes for Kingsfield Academy. The only thing is you have to be outstanding, um, at one, like, academic skill. In something. So, computer... Oh, specifically academic? Well, computer photography, performance, research, scholarship. Something okay. something you can make an argument. This is probably how you got into this school. Absolutely. Athletics is a plus, but it's not necessarily what the school is known for. Unless you make a pitch of whatever you want to do. But, the um, crew. The crew crew. Oh, to- and, again, you they still have sports teams, so... You can still be athletic, but you're probably athletic and good at computers or something. Else. Yeah, we dominate the North American Cricket League. <laughs> we are one of four teams. But the other team, <laughs> two, two, of the- two of them are college, though. So Yeah, that's right. So hold that. And granted, we're in third, but we're better than one of the colleges. <laughs> we won't say who, but it rhymes with schmale. <laughs> Um, Actually, I think rhymes with Schmarvard was the better <laughs> joke there, but Hartford, yeah, yeah, we can, 
We can fix this in post, right? Um, sure, I can do that. Um, we'll do it live. We'll do it live. Um, let's see. There's also relationships called stakes. That doesn't seem like it's important for character creation. Oh, wait, yeah, it is. Okay, and we have to be maxed oh, no, out in one of these no. fields, or we just have to have a very high? You have to have a very high, so you have to have a three. Okay. Okay. Is the, oh, okay. Um, is the thing three or higher? Three or higher. That's pretty much it. There's rules for alphas, which aren't important right now. Says you. Um. Yeah. I'll. I'll. I'll read these and see. Uh, see if they're important later so let's talk about tone um <clears throat> what do you get what, what do you guys want tone wise it sounds like we do want to do a little dark mm -hmm. a little bit darker yeah um see so yeah, a little bit dark um Embracing Kingsfield's kind of edgier head to head dog eat dog yeah. stakes. Well, or be victims of it. That's sure. still a question. Sure. Um, but yes, absolutely embrace that aspect of the setting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Either we are also dogs eating dogs, or we are dogs in a lot of danger of being at. Mm hmm. Um, and then the only other thing is, and I, I have a certain comfort level for this, so I don't think we're going to stray too far from it. But uh, even when it gets darker, it doesn't necessarily have to be gruesome. Like mm -hmm. Agatha Christie books, everybody's murdered all the time, but they're not like gory or anything like that. So I don't think we're going to get too into that. Um, yeah. I don't know if this will be necessarily cozy mysteries, but... <laughs> It's not going to be something that you can't sleep at night after you watched an episode of Criminal Minds or whatever. But, sure. Um, okay. Um, so, let's start creating characters. All right. All right. Is it instructive to talk lines and veils? I feel like other people probably do it better. I feel very comfortable with most things and this group, so I don't know that it's going to be a very elaborate list, but is it is it instructive to talk about sure. lines and veils? Uh, I know what it means. Why don't you explain to the audience, though? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> I, do, I do know what you mean, but I can't think of how to explain it, so I was hoping you could. <laughs> yeah, um, lines are hard nose. I don't want to see it. I don't want to play it. I have no interest in the experience. Veils are, that's okay, but I don't need to spend a lot of time on it. Like, um, I know uh, one of Jim Davis's uh, from WebDM is torture. He's fine with it happening, like, in a character, or to a character or it, within the setting. He, he doesn't need it described. He's fine. They torture me for hours was enough description. Thank you. And when you come back to me, I will be appropriately sobbing or battle-hardened or something. I don't need a lot of squick attached to it. Um... So a veil is more a, I'm okay with it, but let's not dwell on it. And a line is a hard, no, thank you. I would not like that in my gaming experience. Um, uh, and in the case of teenagers behaving badly, that, that's a pretty wide open, mm -hmm. you know, oyster. I, I think I, I fairly trust that. Andy's going to reach his line before I reach mine, so I feel pretty oh, most certainly <laughs> in, in fairly safe hands. Um, yeah, it, as far as my own, I don't care how real. And again, I have no uh, particular, uh, not particularly worried about Andy feeling like this is going to be the game he springs it on us. But um, yeah, sexual assault I think is done, mm -hmm. um, you know, and well enough. Uh, other places that are more appropriate. Uh, that's my line. Also, and Andy, you know this. I don't like things being changed on my character sheet without my consent. Don't take it away from me unless I put it in danger. 
If I say I have a pet hamster, don't have me come back to my room with my hamster dead. Unless uh, I sent my hamster on a suicide mission. I don't know. It's a terrible okay. ver- <laughs> version of okay. that metaphor. But, you but... Would, but how would you feel about it being stolen and that was the mystery? Um, That would be... With the, with the stakes that you'll get it back and I won't, right. I won't kill it or anything. But That would be different. Okay. Um, and and I'd rather not, that not be episode one, but... Yes, that that would be that is that is within bounds. Yes. Okay. And again, if I put my arm through a door and that door is closing, and you told me that, but I still think it's worth saving the book or something, and I lose an arm, I did it with eyes wide open. If in the course of play I turn around and my arm's missing, I don't like that. That's that's not a contract I entered. This is a terrible school of kids are mo- missing arms. It's Kingsfield. <laughs> Things get fucking real here. Get on board. Uh, Cece. Um, I would say that I agree with those. And if I could add, um, and I don't know that this would ever come up, but I'm imagining a, a scenario might arise where we might get into like some um, like drug paraphernalia kind of issues or something like that. It's like some kids are juicing or whatever. Um, anything descriptive of needles or anything, I'm not real cool with. Um, and I don't think that there would be anything else. It's kind of my big one, um, especially for like torture and stuff. Real, real big, not on the needles front. <laughs> um yeah, I think that would be about it. Uh, and it's certainly it. worth asking, Andy, because we have much delight at your uh, at your blushing. Uh, now's a good time to set down any rules you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> we also would have to respect your lines if you're like, enough with the C-word joke. <laughs> it's S-E-A, Ward. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, oh, boy. Part of the thing is... I do think it's funny when I get uncomfortable. So, like, yes. like going back and rewatching those episodes, it's really funny that I just keep stammering that you guys <laughs> keep talking about the C ward. Yeah. <laughs> um. So no one has crossed. Let me phrase it this way: No one has crossed any of my lines on the show ever. Sure. <clears throat> um. Yeah. No, and I don't even think in like a home game. No, I, I'm pretty comfortable. Again, I, I, I want to have a good enough sense of humor about myself that if everyone is having fun and I know it's good natured, I'm even if I'm blushing, I am laughing still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and well, this is a small group that I trust implicitly anyway. But even to the larger group, there's no one that I don't trust. That even if they did cross a line, I couldn't say after a stream, right? Hey, yeah, don't do that, and I wouldn't get a pretty heartfelt apology about it. So right. I, I feel we're in good hands, okay. but yeah, there we go. Everybody at home. That's lines and veils. Sometimes it can be that easy. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, that being, uh, that being established character mm-hmm. creation. Uh, I think my sheet probably looks a little different than yours just cause I printed mine out from the back of the book. But I know oh, sure, uh, sure. CC made a uh, Google Docs fillable version. Um, yeah, crazy handy. So the uh, because there are two players, uh, we get extra points. You get extra points. Yeah. Um, so everyone Shit. starts with forty bill, uh, forty general points. Okay. So that's athletics, computers, cool, driving. Filch, first aid, intuition, preparedness, repair, sneaking, throwdown. So general skills. Um, general skills, you will roll a d6 to um, attempt to beat a number I set. So it'll be two to eight. Two, why am I even bothering asking you to roll it? Eight is nearly impossible. Mm-hmm. 
Um, this is on a single D6? This is on a single D6, and you spend points to add to it. You can juice it. So if you have a six athletics, your rating is six, you have a pool of six points, and I ask you to run a mile as fast as you can, and maybe that's difficulty five. And you're like, well, I really want to run that mile really fast because we need to get somewhere. I'm going to spend three points so I only have to roll a two. Mm -hmm. So that's general abilities. I'm sorry, because mm -hmm. I, I was scrolling to see the part I want to... Now, do you spend it before you roll it, or can you push it once you've rolled it? Um, I think it's before. It is before, I believe. Okay, so you're kind of not gambling so much, but you are staking that, hey, yeah. I'm going to make this roll, and I'm going to spend three to, to try to insure it. That's not insuring it. As opposed to, I rolled a two, I really want to make it kind of a mm -hmm. Cthulhu's luck points, right? Right. Is, Okay. Uh, okay. So it's the previous. Okay. And the other thing is, if you have a zero in it, you can't do it at all. Okay. So if if I ask for a computer's check, and Marty's character doesn't know how to use a computer, you can't even try. <laughs> it is. You'll take you twenty minutes to figure out where the on button is. Or <laughs> like me at work the other day, that there is no disc tray anymore. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be here somewhere <laughs> it's when did they stop doing this um how am i gonna burn cds why is everyone laughing at me <laughs> um so uh oh and the other thing is cool is kind of like your hit points uh and it's not necessarily how cool you are it's keep, mm -hmm. it's keeping your cool Mm -hmm. It's okay. um, oh, yeah. and you get four points in it to start. You can go as high as you want, and if you have a bunch, you're like school royalty. But um, cool points you can lose them in uh, throwdowns, which are sort of replacing fights. Because if you get into a fight in high school, you are in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, don't get into a fight. Especially at this high school, you probably will get expelled. Yes. Um, and then you also spend cool to go to places where you're not really supposed to be. So uh, to enter the adult world, um, if you go to like your, your mom's work or whatever, you have to spend a cool point to pass it off like I'm supposed to be here. It's not bring your daughter to work day. No, no. No, no. See my mom. It's cool. I'm interning. And then to enter straight up dangerous places. You know this is a known gang territory. You're entering an abandoned warehouse. That costs cool points to enter. And if you have none, you can't go in. Because you just lose your nerve. Um, and then... You're Veronica Mars sneaking up on Harry Hamlin's house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Don't do it, Veronica. It's Harry Hamlin. <laughs> He's the obvious bad guy. <laughs> He's a C-list actor. You know he did it. This is his comeback. <laughs> Apologies to Harry Hamlin. I mean, but he was a C-list actor. That was his comeback. Mm -hmm. Also a swan song, I think. I don't know if he's been in anything else. No, no. But hey. It's a shame. He's really good in Veronica Mars. He really is. Um... Okay, so then the other thing, the other the other skills on here are investigative abilities, which on the character sheet are listed as academic abilities for some reason, huh. <laughs> instead of investigative. So the thing with investigative abilities is if you have a score in it and it is related to the clue, I will give you the clue. If Marty's character has a four in photography and you're looking at a picture, I will tell you a basic clue about the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, and I will sometimes ask, who has the highest fashion? Who has the highest photography? Or if you're looking through a room, you can say, I have a very high photography. Do I notice anything in here? And I will tell you. Mm -hmm. In addition, you can spend points from your score to get better clues. 
So I'm trying to think. There's a, what's the example? Uh, the, oh, so the example of photography. Um, you notice something in the picture. If you have a good photography score and you spend a point from it, you might notice. Oh, this was taken with you know, such and such a camera, it's old and grainy, and it was probably an old smartphone or an old camera phone, or, oh, this was taken with a telescopic lens, you can tell because of X, Y, and Z, stuff like that. That that would be a spend, other than me just telling you the basic clue. It's a daguerreotype. Yes. <laughs> but, if you have the score, I give you the clue. Mysteries are no fun unless you have clues. Yes, yeah, good point. Um, so is that going to be a thing that like you would give us the clue and then we would be like I'm going to spend two extra points or whatever to try and see if I can get more kind of a deal? Yes. Or I might okay. I might also ask you would anyone like to spend points in mm-hmm. fashion or notice or whatever and you can be like oh, I only have one left and we already got a good enough clue we have a pretty good idea. I don't think we need another one. We have a okay. lead how do we recharge points? Because our pool remains the same. If we had five photography and I mm-hmm. spent three, I still have a five photography, but I am right. down to a two pool, um, right? How does that replenish? Is it between adventures kind of thing? Yeah, I believe it's between adventures, and I think I can okay. I think I can reward you with them as well. Okay. Let's see. 81. But that's our currency per mystery, maybe. That's probably how that it's built. Sense. Uh, yeah, you refresh them after the adventure. Okay. Oh, and you can refresh certain physical general pools. Athletics, driving, fighting, repairing, sneaking, every 24 hours in-game. Okay. So that makes sense. Okay. If you take a nap, you, you're you you're better at running again. Yeah. Cool. All right, so that's for general investigation between mysteries. Yes. Uh, we'll talk about interpersonal once we get uh, there. They also refresh after 24 hours. Okay. So I can pull a grown-up face every 24 hours. Yes. <laughs> good. Too good. Um, and how many investigative points do we get? Oh, yes. Uh, you get eight investigative points. Cool. And then interpersonal. And then interpersonal, you get 12. Okay. Um, and... Uh, Interpersonal are a lot like investigative. Um, but then we make a pitch that mm-hmm. at the party we're looking for the hot goss. While CC's like, I'm using my grown up face to get into my mom's office because yeah. the councilman's behind it yes. or whatever. Okay. Um, oh no, I don't have a mom this week. I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. Well, you should have yeah. rode better. I'm whoever's in the back yelling at you to row. <laughs> row. That row. person has a name. Row. Crew captain. Crew chairman. Crew chairman. Crew chairman. <laughs> That's it. Um, and then uh, interpersonal. Um, they might also be used in throwdowns. Um and that then you then it's more like general abilities where you're spending dice to add stuff to dice rolls right uh but that that is a little different and when we get into a throwdown i'll kind of go over the rules for a throwdown but and then the last thing is relationship points so creating relationships um it relationships are the bonds that Sleuth has with a member of the supporting cast, a character played by the GM instead of one of the other players, an NPC. I didn't have to read all that. You guys know what NPCs are. Yep. Um, but... this, sorry, this game is aimed for teenagers, yeah. but or not. It it it's a good first role playing game, I think. But um, for sure, um, you have three kinds of relationships: loves, likes, and hates. Loves are best friends, close relatives, romantic partners. You don't have to necessarily literally be in love with them. It could be your right. boyfriend for three months, which in high school, that feels like love. It's forever. It's forever. Andrew. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to move into his loft and when his band takes off, mm-hmm. we're forever. Mm-hmm. 
What's his man name again? No, he doesn't have a job, Mom. Quit prying. He tried working at McDonald's, but they oppressed him. <laughs> they oppressed him right out of a job. Look it up, Mom. <laughs> Look it up. I um, was born to play this teenage girl. <laughs> I hate you. Slam door. Slam door. Or this 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 teenage girl could also be played by Billy Eichner, as we discussed. Chadri <laughs> should be played by Billy Eichner. <laughs> okay. Fire um, produces light. Look it up. <laughs> um, uh, the likes, friends, friendly contacts. Um, they're willing to help you out a couple times before you're probably pressing it. Yeah. Um, and then hates. It's your arch enemies, people you just don't like. Your rival. Your rival. Now, why would I spend points in hate? So, uh, for flavor only, or is there um, some systemic value in having a rival? When you take a hate. Other than blaming our every crime on them. Uh, when you take a hate, <laughs> that relationship starts at three for free. And you gain three build points to put into other relationships. Oh, I see. It's taking a flaw in a White Wolf yeah. game. It's okay. Um, so, but I'm also arming my DM. What are we calling you in this setting? I have, it's game moderator. Game moderator. I am moderating <laughs> your game. Yeah, that's a little um, sleuth master. There we go. That's what I was looking for. The clue master. You're Stephanie Brown's dad. Um, but yes, you are also arming your clue master with uh, someone to work against you. So mm -hmm. that tracks. I, totally I like that. that on the <laughs> uh, and you also can gain cool points when you beat your hate in a contest. Oh, uh, cool, cool. Which sounds more metaphorical than it is. Yes, no, it's... You show them up at lunch when they step to you and are just like, nice hat. And you're like, yeah, I had a shirt like that once, and then my dad went shopping. Burn! You burnt! You burnt! <laughs> um... um okay. God, high school sucked. Pretending to go to high school is a lot better. Really yeah. is. That's you don't true. have to yeah. deal with any of the day-to-day -day bullshit. I'm very far removed from it. Those words can't actually hurt me anymore. Um, okay, there don't was... have anybody judging you, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other thing is, if you want an ability... That is very specific and narrow that's not on this list. So, for instance, you want art, crime scene procedure, escape artist, electronic surveillance, uh, stunt driving. Uh, you can buy it with a cap. A cap ability has forming constraints. Can only be brought up to two or six if a general... It costs five build points to get your first point in a cap. Oh, jeez. Um, I might recommend Seems not doing that at the beginning and buying yeah, one of those it later. It doesn't seem worth it. No. Because I was going to say, like, could you make it so that I'm not great at athletics, I'm good at swimming. But then you'd be hampering yourself, yeah. and it sounds like really giving yourself a handicap you don't need. You could just take athletics and also be good at swimming then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, and then... Um, the only other thing I can think of is the game does recommend that one of you is at least good at every, that you both cover everything. So together yeah, sure. you all have at least one point in every skill on the sheet. Sure, sure. It, if you're missing something like repair or something... Maybe just yeah. build a relationship with your cousin who went to the Votech school down the street and he's trained right. to be a car mechanic. 
Yeah. And you take him all your stuff that needs to be repaired or whatever. Yeah. I'm not spending points in driving. We're going to be at this prep school the whole time. Plus, they took away my car privileges because I didn't do well on my math test. Only winners get cars, apparently. Uh, that pen's gone forever. Okay. They threatened to sell it to the Votech school. <laughs> my grade doesn't raise three points. They keep sending you parts in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is just cruel. Okay. So. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll spend build points, spend general points. Uh, you spend at least five of your relationship build points. You can spend them later. If you don't want to spend them now, you have to spend at least five. Uh, and this is true of everything. You don't have to buy everything right now. If you want to buy stuff later, you can. Okay. Um, um, now, how does that work? Uh, I, have to, I won't bore everyone on the stream with it, but I, there's an interesting way. Actually, I'm going to. Uh, there's an interesting way of building, which is you don't spend any of your points. And when something comes up in game, you're like, uh, yeah, I actually was a sailor, so I know this. I'm now making this character decision because now I'm, I'm discovering my character live. I don't love that because you can just, especially in a, you know, what will be a one or two shot, you can inevitably just be like, yeah, I'm good at all the things I need to be good at to ace the adventure. But I do find mm-hmm. it to be interesting. Uh, but like if, you know, in one of us goes to our chem lab and there's Andrew, can I just be like, uh, I spend two points. He's my lab partner. Yes. Like, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I think for relationships, especially that kind of gameplay works well. Yeah. Uh, for stuff like investigative abilities, I'd rather you have some of them at least on the sheet just because then I can <laughs> yeah. throw stuff at you and be like, no one has fashion and no one's willing to commit any points to fashion. Okay, well, who ripped the prom queen's dress is going to be a very hard mystery now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Take more pictures of bees. <laughs> It's mostly bees. I had my senior thesis is on bees. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so there's those points. Oh, and how many relationship points did we have? I'm sorry. Did we, oh, yeah. did we establish that? Uh, 18. 18, okay. What, what's a good roll? Is that still a D6 uh, rate? Is relationships like the three high um. Um. sorry no that's this is the part of the stream where we learn. <laughs> right before we do that. Let's, here we go. So in this example, uh, Jessica's player has 13 points to assign, plus three for taking a hate. So when okay. she's done, she has mom, love, six. Ginny, like four. Greg, like three. Priscilla, like one. Principal Sanchez, like two. Caitlin, hate three. Fucking Caitlin. Um, God damn it, Caitlin. (laughs) So the good thing, uh, one of the things with relationships uh, is they get you, they'll get you like an ability. Right. Uh, So for instance, in this example, Jessica's mom is a medical tech. Uh, okay. she's, yeah, she's the, uh, the medical examiner, so she can call in a favor and probably get some information she's not supposed to get from her mom. So now, Principal Sanchez there, mm-hmm. is that one get out of trouble, is that two get out of trouble free cards? Or if it's, the trouble is big enough, is that get out of trouble cards right now? Like, is it a matter of like, okay, Greg will do that for you, but it's going to cost two of your relationship to get him to do that because you're putting him at 
Or can I call in three favors with Greg? Because I have a three in Greg. Yeah, I took a three in Greg. <laughs> Come on, Greg. I thought you were cool. <laughs> no, I was cool. And then you got me in trouble for trying to buy beef. Because I have this crust ash. <laughs> um, they weren't impressed. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> Come on, we're still talking about that? It was earlier today. <laughs> ah, come on, Greg. Bygones, you know? Um, Let them be. Yeah, I, honestly. Uh, just, okay. Um... Jessica spends two points from her mom relationship and liberates a corpse-eating beetle from the forensic entomology lab. What? Fuck, Jessica. <laughs> well, okay, well, while her mom is in looking and puts it in Caitlin's locker. What the hell, Jessica? Wow, Jessica, you are the villain of this campaign. You don't know it yet. <laughs> the ensuing shriek distracts everyone enough for her to sneak into the principal's office to search for any more of those chemicals. The GM lowers the difficulty on that stealth test by two point by those two points. Fuck all of that for two <laughs> points off stealth? There's a flesh eating beetle loose in our high school now. <laughs> Jessica! I'm writing that down. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be in so much trouble with my fucking mom. <laughs> While she wasn't looking my ass, I'm gonna get whipped with a belt when I get home. My mom came from a very severe family. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jessica is 100% the villain of this piece. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I feel like Jessica has a much higher hate score on Caitlyn. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, you can only hope it's reciprocated, otherwise Caitlyn is an unwitting victim. <laughs> I started off being like, God damn it, Caitlyn, but now I kind of feel bad for her. A flesh-eating beetle? Is that what it said? <laughs> Corpse-eating. It did say corpse. Corpse-eating. Okay, well then, oh, but right, if you give a little safer. If you give poor Caitlin a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, no. Shit, still. Um, and then the other thing you can do is borrow an ability from them. So if you spend two points with your relationship with your mom, it's the equivalent of a two-point spend in research. To find okay. out, like, what a chemical is or whatever, you know, if your mom's a chemical engineer or something like that. Right, 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 right. So okay. the more points you have, the better your information kind of stuff would be. Um, uh, and then also to just ask them to do things for you, that tends to be one point off. So, oh, or if it's risky, two points. So okay. back to your question, yeah. yes. So It if is you, a severity thing. Yeah. If you want your mom to call you out of school, well, that might be one point. But if you want, you know, Greg to go try and get you those drugs or whatever his crustache is supposed to be doing, that's probably two. <laughs> if I want my mom to give me a corpse-eating beetle. Apparently that's only two points. That's a four. That's more than my own mom loves me. Like, I'm Craig. It's your own corpse eating beetle <laughs> um love you mom you always knew I wanted that corpse eating beetle for my 14th birthday but here we are we've all made mistakes <clears throat> alright that's enough about corpse eating beetles okay. I don't know. I have a new line it's corpse eating beetles <laughs> um okay so that's that's all the points there are to spend and a bit uh, better understanding of what they all do. Mm -hmm. All right. I have a pre-canned bitch with a camera. Um, but A, that's pre-canned, and I'm kind of playing the worst on at least one and a half of our streams right now. Um, and so I don't know that I want to be... Another rich bitch semi antagonist. Uh, I'm not above it though, and would play it distinctly. But I do like one of the benefits of playing on all these streams is having 
you know, something right. unique to each of them. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, if you want to add a wrinkle to it, you don't have to be rich because Kingsfield pays your scholarship as long as you get in. That's right. That's true. So you could be a poor bitch. So I could be more Max than uh, I, I forget the the rich bitch in Life is Strange, but yeah, I can't remember. Her. No, uh, it turns out typing in "rich bitch life is strange" is not productive. Um, so yeah, but like I'm not, especially with Chidara, I'm not playing anybody jockey. I could play the physical, the outdoorsy, uh, athletic type. I was gonna say, didn't you? I think you once told me about either a vampire or a mortal in a World of Darkness game that was a soccer player that you that you enjoyed. Yeah, that was uh, Changeling the Lost. Okay. Um, and yeah, she was the jockeyist and just kind of thick, but had a, yeah, I I enjoyed the heck out of. So and we want to cover bases, so opposites attract. So CC. Why don't you stake a claim, and I'll stake a claim around you. Do you have a strong leaning? We can always default to AU, Dance Lab, and Pianti. Just That's, know that I got you. Okay. That, that'll be our backup for right now. <laughs> yes. Victoria Chase is her name. Sorry, mm. I had to get that settled. Bless you. Thank you. Some kind of a name. Okay. Um, I am leaning currently towards some sort of a scholarship kid. Um. I don't super find much enjoyment in playing the the rich. Mm -hmm. type. It's not really my bag. Uh, I'm feeling more of like the scholarship. Miles Morales. <sighs> Whatever that character's name is, Vince, that I've really been enjoying. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking more of that angle. Um, not super sure other than that, though. Uh, we could both be a couple of pores that are roomed together because everyone else working. knew they wanted their roommate because they've known them. Um, mm -hmm. But all right, so, what's your scholarship for? Are you leaning more towards academics? Uh, um, yeah, I think that I would lean more towards academic towards a forty type. Okay. Although I'm Is... not opposed to being on a team. Do kind of like on a lot. So I don't yeah, I don't mind being generally sporty jockey or the art kid. Um, that does leave us with some weaknesses, but I'm mm -hmm. fairly comfortable with that, and we can cover some of that in relationships of if we absolutely positively have no athletics. <laughs> My kind of friend one of those. is on the yeah. lacrosse team and she will beat you up. I was kind of one of those kids that lived in both worlds in high school. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> had one foot in the art game, but in the. I'm also on the soccer team, and the track team, and the cross country team. That's not prohibitive. What is free time? I don't have it. <laughs> Who needs it? <laughs> Trying to feel. All right. Let's both be scholarship kids, because I'm pl I'm playing a straight-up rich bitch, and I'm playing someone who touts her education far too much per episode. So um, they're both stuck up in their own right. <laughs> so let's play some struggling scholarship thing. yeah some earthy chicks I will be playing some degree of troubled woman I feel like that was <laughs> no, unsaid you? but yeah I just <laughs> in case it needed to be expressed well that was going to be my question with especially considering Dan Slap and Beyonce as backups do we want to do an all girls academy Ooh. Ironically named Kingsfield. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, should we call it Queensfield? But I actually almost like it. Like, oh, gross. I think it's I think it's worse if it's named Kingsfield, but it's an all-girls really school. Do. Yeah. What was the origin of this school? Um, 
questioning the school's origin is minus five points. Damn it. You don't have parents anymore. <laughs> we take the hamster Marty put on his character sheet away. <laughs> First thing, I said I don't like that. I said it. Um, or cer- certainly we will be in the girl's <laughs> wing if mm-hmm. Andy finds value in a co-ed uh, establishment, if only to have some dude bro named Chad. I do like dude bros named Chad. <laughs> uh, Kyle is the new, the new. Kyle's the new Chad. Yeah, I accept. I saw a news article about it. That means it must be true. Oh, that's a weird thing to write a news article about. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, suck it, Kyle. <laughs> I'm safe until you get to Marty. <laughs> All right, so so we have to take an academic skill, and we have to have a plus three to it as like our thing. Yes. Okay. Um, just but to look but it does. It also doesn't have to be under the academic thing. Okay. Because uh-huh. it could also be computers, for instance. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. Negotiation, maybe if you like, want to make it de- uh, like a debate club nerd. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as you can, as long as you can make an argument to me of this is probably how you got into the school. It's your strongest school related um, skill. Yeah, I'll let you do it as the clue master. <laughs> the clue master. <laughs> yeah. Uh, scholarship is general uh, academics, I presume. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, where's that one under? My scholarship was pop culture. Oh, man. I do kind of want to play the sporty chick, but Others. like that will require that you guys absolutely need an anchor person on your l- <laughs> girls lacrosse team for why I'm even here. <laughs> Um, but then I I can play the straight up theater kid too. I don't hate that. Yeah, this doesn't have to be a straight only book learning school. It can be an arts kind of an artsy school too. Yeah, and, and again, it, we don't, we can ignore that part of the book if you want to make it that also they're trying to build an academic program and you're just some brick who's really good at field <laughs> hockey <laughs> yeah it turns out the sports program here not great <laughs> just got better <laughs> <laughs> now that uh who's that forge cleric's name i named it after my friend emmy so it was emmy something i'll look it up in my notes oh what was her name I can't remember. We'll remember. Yeah. She was charming as hell. Um. All right. God. Man, I I don't know. I kind of find it funny to be the brick at like this otherwise very effete academy. <laughs> High five and everybody. They don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> yeah, they're all indoor kids. <laughs> no, thank you. But up top. Ow. <laughs> J-Dog, Jennifer. J-Dog, <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> it's pronounced Jennifer. There's it's no barking in it. <laughs> it's reminding me a lot of my college roommate. <laughs> that he was like like really really like super athletic and like super charismatic and like that guy that would be like hey what's up you know like really in your face but then he was like super 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 smart and was studying like sports medicine mm-hmm. that's why he was like really into sports because he was like that's what he was studying oh <laughs> not walking down the hallways Jess heard you got that corpse eating beetle nice <laughs> <laughs> tight 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 
<laughs> Gonna get Caitlyn with that later? Sick. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Tell me when so I can watch that. <laughs> Stay tight, J Dog. <laughs> J in sign language. Just learn that. Oh, don't know anything else. Just a J. <laughs> nice to see you again. I oh, know we're having a lot of fun with it, but now hold on. This was supposed to be the the being very serious. Um, yes, but also I mean, we're gonna be weird and goofy no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's only so much you can fight the tide. Yeah, and simple doesn't mean stupid. She can still mm -hmm. focus mm -hmm. in. Uh, Liz... and, and, and we've built in a first aid score if I go with that kind of mm -hmm. uh, and Liz in chat says you can always be a sports kid who secretly wants to be a theater kid but social norms and pressures ooh the ooh. Travis Willingham's of the world I like that good call Liz thank you Liz Yeah, I, I, I kind of like that, actually. Like, I'm here from the athletics program, but then... Yeah, it turns out I can fucking slam this stage shit. <laughs> you guys ever hear of Shakespeare? Turns out I'm super great at it. <laughs> <laughs> a pie. The bard. <laughs> Hark, a badass is here. <laughs> oh, you never played Life of Strange 2, so I can't... No. There was a scene kind of like that in Life is Strange 2 where uh, Chloe has to stage without ever having like previously been in the play. Oh, nice. And so she kind of improvises in her Chloe Esquoy, if you can imagine. <sighs> I can. I need to play that game. You do. I need to get over it. Or at least um, watch a playthrough of it. That's true. Then no money was spent. You scabs. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go for uh, lacrosse or field hockey, Andy. What's the sport in this town? Oh, boy. Um, whew. Man, lacrosse has like a just jockier reputation, <laughs> but I also think field hockey is kind of cool. Like, yeah, and it's really like it's it's kind of weird because like it's a sport that high schoolers and college kids play, and yeah, like yeah, and that's it. No, <laughs> um, but oof, I I'm trying to remember. I I know I know in my high school the girls field hockey team had to wear skirts. I don't know if the girls lacrosse team did. Yeah, the field hockey team for sure does. Yeah. Um, I do feel like the lacrosse team does too because we insist on putting girls in skirts. It's... Will this be the second time I reference a league of their own in like two weeks because I kind of love that they made them wear skirts while playing baseball and they're all rashed up to the thighs of just yeah. like, yeah, we slide into bases, yeah. you dicks. And field hockey, everything's so low and that ball is so big. And those are just clubs that they, they're not. You have like, a club. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is a one D four, yeah. For whatever club, for whatever reason, every time I thought of building a Call of Cthulhu investigator, I was like, their weapon of choice is a field hockey bat because that thing yeah. hurts. That thing, fuck it, yeah. That's That's a, that is just a club. Um, I'm gonna roll a D two, Marty. Okay. Come on, look hey, it's yeah. <laughs> Well, if, you want it be hockey? if you want it to be lacrosse, I'll just make it lacrosse. No, no. I was just... I picked the first one I, to make a joke out of. Lacrosse. All right. All right, yeah. So I'm a lacrosse player who Steve holds her way into the school play. Steve Holt. Did you know yes. some people get paid to say words? <laughs> and wonders never cease, man. Good talk. See you out there. 
Good hustle. <laughs> like when I'm seeing, leave it all on the field. <laughs> oh man, it's been a while since I've played a sporty lesbian. I'm into it. <laughs> it may have only been two months if you count Chidara, so but she cried in the snow a lot. All right, so athletics for sure. Uh, she's probably got some cool. Now, cool the skill and cool, and at least on Cece's uh, character sheet, there's cool up in like the main kind of indicia part of the character sheet. There's also cool the skill. Are they two different things? Does one supply a pool for the other? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're um, just the same. Yeah, because I, I think since Cool is handled kind of like the HP in this game, that they, because uh, on the character sheet, Cool was underneath like the character portrait, and it had like a big like circled area in it where I assume you would be erasing and modifying it constantly. So the Cool sure, sure. down in the chart, I think, is to be like your overall pool, and then the one up at the top is to be like the one that you erase a lot directly. I see. Okay. Would be. Um. But yeah, I guess yeah they are both because I, I so yeah I, yeah what CC just said it's both it it determines your cool level but then also you can you can have a rating and spend it like normal if I ask for it for whatever reason instead of. If it were to come up as just deducing, deducting from your cool point total, if that makes sense, yeah. Okay, what's a good enough, good and excellent score, respectively? So let's. See. Uh, even one point indicates impressive skill on a topic. Two points is a defining characteristic uh, in, in indicating all state ranking, huge natural talent, or dazzling expertise. Three points is something you want your sleuth to do a lot in every episode. So, in the example, uh, uh, high school sociopath Jessica put <laughs> three points into notice... One point into photography, research, and scholarship. And she talks Tyler into taking town lore. <laughs> so she can get what she wants. Jesus, Jessica, it's not all about you. She is you are the villain. The <laughs> Jessica, I'm on Caitlin's side. Full stop now. <clears throat> Corpse eating beetles? Too far, Jessica. Come on, read the room. Uh, and then for interpersonal abilities, it suggests overstocking the ones you will enjoy role playing. So, um, or ones that you think would fit your character well. And what about general? Because we got a fuckload of points. Yeah. I mean, I could successfully um, have a two in everything. I feel like without stretching. Um, uh, a rating of one to two is a sideline. Three to four is solid, but not off the charts. Five to seven is a personal speciality. And eight or better is really impressive. Okay. So it is a, a distinctly different scale. Yeah. For in general. Okay. Whereas it feels like investigate and a little bit less so in interpersonal are exponential. Like a one to a two is a big leap. Mm -hmm. Whereas in general, one to two is the same. Yeah. Yeah. So effectively. And for general, you are... Because that's the one you're rolling versus spending. Mm -hmm. So, um, because in interpersonal and academic, often just having the score gets you stuff, they tend to be right. worth more, just having a score in them. Um, okay. What's Filch? Is that pickpocketing being a sneaky shit? Steal small things unobtrusively, mm -hmm. uh, planting stuff on someone, or hiding something small somewhere unobtrusive. Okay. Right. 
Athletics. So, uh, cool. Does your sheet have over. fighting on it? It Probably. does. Okay. I don't know why mine fighting. doesn't. Fighting. I don't know why oh, mine yeah. doesn't. It, sh it should. Mine just doesn't for some reason. Hmm. Well, they do not encourage fights, right? In no. the rule book. They're like, yeah. you're doing it wrong. We don't want to tell you you're doing it wrong, but you're doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but guess who has three points in fighting? Jessica. Fucking Jessica! <laughs> God damn it, Jessica. You're the fucking end boss of Bubblegum Shoe. With her corpse-eating beetles. Yeah. Yeah, well, my mom has corpse-eating beetles, so I'd back off. Okay. Fucking Jessica. Jessica Park. My Turns ass. out she's a part of the Korean mafia if you trace her family back, like, a minute. Like, a literal minute. <laughs> her drive is fairness. Oh, yeah? Is that what you call it, Jessica? Corpse-eating beetles? <laughs> Your mom's some uh, research partner in the corpse eating beetle <laughs> department. <laughs> Oof. Fairness, I guess. Like, do we have Caitlin's story? I'm still on her side. No, she she doesn't get stats. Plus, she's super cute, and I'm into girls. All right. <laughs> So thinking about my character, uh, mm -hmm. I was kind of was thinking about like what were the really uh, competitive courses at my college, um, and the two that were known for being like super 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 competitive were the journalism architecture courses. So it's kind of thinking of doing kind of like an architecture like nerdy girl and maybe that could lead in that's why we're like rooming together is because like i do like the set building and stuff in the mm. theater like maybe mm -hmm. the school is very theater based so that leads in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this year's performance is going to be their best yet Sorry, I'm doing math. No problem. As well, but I, I do I I like that CC. I was thinking that she might be a little bit. More... I don't know if I necessarily want to. It seems one that's about. Well, right now in the easier categories for investigate, I've spent, I have a notice of two because mm -hmm. she's sharp. She has an outdoors of two because of course she is. She goes camping with her dad. Uh, she has a research and scholarship of one each because she always has to study to keep up. She, she has to hit the books. So. That's where she's getting that from. And a two in town lore, because she's a townie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, for interpersonal, she's got a BS detector of two, a flirting of one, because I mean, it's either an all-girls school or it's an impressive contingent. You got to brush up on that. Uh, she has a one in grown-up face. <laughs> uh, two intimidation, two performance, two reassurance, and two taunt. The two in performance is what she's using to get by. I might, it, and taunt is from sports. I might take one away from something to give myself a three in performance mm -hmm. to make that. This is the reason she's now the lead in Romeo and Juliet, and she's Romeo. Um, we're reversing it. The director has a vision. 
It's going to be Romeo and Juliet played by all girls this time. We're taking it back. Yeah, and everyone's dressed like they're from the Matrix for some reason. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I mean, cool. And the Nine Inch Nails soundtrack is like bitching, but are you sure, Coach? <laughs> it's director. Right on, Coach. Put me in. <laughs> Put me in. Uh, do we want it to be an all-girls school? Capulets and Montagues. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, Stop high vibing the Capulets, please. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Uh, that, that's as much up to you. It depends on how much you need Steve Holtz and assorted other uh, male villainous bad guys. I am totally down for the all girls Kingsfield Academy or whatever it is. Uh, CC? I feel like I'm leaning more towards it being all girls. Okay. Which makes their Romeo and Juliet or Midsummer Night Dream whatever all the more hilarious to me. Um, all girls. I'll be taking a relationship with that theater uh, teacher as well as the coach of the field hockey team who might be the same person, which also makes me laugh. Finally, they put a professional in charge. Let's hustle buns, girls. Let's go back to one. <laughs> My friend, uh, he's an art teacher at like a middle school and he had a te- he had a coach soccer last year and boy, was there a person less well equipped uh, you can't find one because he was. I can't even imagine. Perfect. Um. All right. So in general, is a hell of a lot of points. It and is. There's a lot of things. I've, I've kind of asterisked <clears throat> athletics, cool driving. I don't know that we'll need it, so I can take points from that if we need it. At least one pointing fighting, but I don't. I don't want this to be a fighting game. But right. God forbid, yeah. someone needs to push somebody. But I'm also okay at it. Maybe you've been in a lacrosse fight or whatever. Right? Oh, yeah. Your <laughs> lacrosse is basically <laughs> yeah. organized fighting with a ball in the middle. Dropping gloves and pulling sweaters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, first aid, intuition, preparedness, repair, and throwdown. So not so good at sneaking filch or computers very specifically. Those are my big gaps. But I'm also, I plan on being... Uh, only a little bit good at a lot of these, except for maybe athletics. Uh, maybe some extra points spent in intuition because she's good at reading people because she's honest. That makes sense. She expects other people to be honest too. Linda, why are you being a bitch right now? Come on. Don't, don't no. <laughs> it's, it's not how we talk to each other at Kingsfield. <laughs> don't be a bitch. Okay, well, I'm reporting you to the D. No dog. Why you gotta be like that? <laughs> no, but okay. Um, quit just taking the first letter of our first names and adding dog to the end. <laughs> Do you think you're clever? You're not. <laughs> Go on, L dog. Don't be like that. <laughs> Classic L dog. <laughs> <laughs> this is L dog all day. Am I right, guys? I would like to spend two in reassurance to make L dog agree. Damn it. <laughs> Hell dog finds herself nodding. <laughs> That's my girl. Erasing her name on her paper and rewriting Hell dog. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I don't have enough characters like this right now. I need this. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Cece, what are you, what are you looking at? And then we'll start to wrap it up, and you guys can fill in specific numbers. Yeah, um, yeah. After you think about them, because it's it's past nine o'clock. So, yeah. So I, I'm thinking, like personality wise, I'm gonna go with more of like the goofy, clumsy, like try hard, like super easily flustered, kind of awkward, nerdy girl. Um. So basically, the opposite of confidence, which it seems yeah. like Marty's character is gonna be. This is um, gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. uh and then as far as like numbers and stuff, I think I'm just going to look at what Marty 
took after the stream and then try and fit my numbers in around that. So, yeah, there's it. I didn't take too much research or scholarship, so there's... Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to lean heavily into research and scholarship. Uh, I left pop culture wide open for you. I've seen one <laughs> Star War. It was the best Star War. It was the one with the teddy bears. <laughs> it's the one with all the guys in white uh, shooting at each other. Um, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Revenge of the... I want to My say favorite Star Wars is Battlestar Galactica season two. <laughs> Up high. Wrath of Nobody? Khan was a great Star War. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into some classics. Star Wars Beyond. Star Wars Into Darkness. <laughs> that one's good. It's made by the race car movie guy. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm right. Who do you think you're talking about? <laughs> James Bond. But I've realized now that's the third one, right? It is the third one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, J.J. Abrams did the first two. Yes, yeah. He's not the race car movie guy. (laughs) No, but I did. I also like like that maybe you were talking about George Lucas as the race car movie guy. (laughs) (laughs) He did. He did a race car movie, kind of. Um... We've all had a lot of fun here. We have. All directors are race car guys. <laughs> yeah, like really the race cars. Doesn't narrow it down like weirdly same, enough. Like, they wear like the same like headset thing, right? Yeah. That's why they do that. Um, okay, and then the last thing, uh, other than numbers, which again, we can hammer out um, off air. Um, the last things are to find your class, click, and club, which are, uh, you can save these until after town creation, which we'll have to do later. Um, Mm -hmm. so class is socioeconomic class. I think we, we kind of talked about that. Uh, click is click. It's jocks, cheerleaders, nerds, stoners, gearheads, etc., um, can I split that because I, I'm somehow a jock theater girl? Sure. Or sure. Should I favor one? Uh, you can do both. I feel like you're favoring jock just from the, what we've been talking about. But yeah, yeah I think yeah. the theater group is real annoyed with me, but tolerant. Yeah, you, <clears throat> the other thing you could do a is yeah. you could do click and club, so you could hang out with the jocks, but your club is drama. Okay, I like it. And my class is pretty blue collar. I think mm-hmm. that's become apparent. And then, and then drive. Uh, to be teen detectives, you have to really want to stick your nose where it doesn't belong. Um, you can't play it smart. You can't turtle up and ignore the problem. You can't let things slide. It's every teen detective has a bit of a mouth on them and they're sticking their nose where it doesn't belong. Yeah, no, that's my favorite <clears throat> genre. Uh, your drive... Um, woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your drive is your fundamental personality quality that drives you into mystery solving. Uh, hates not knowing, friendship, love sick, love sick, sense of justice, etc. Uh, Jessica's drive is fairness. She wants good people to succeed and bad people to fail. And who's yeah, by your own definition of good to... people, Jessica, you're a villain. <laughs> you're one of the masters of evil right now. <laughs> they have some good ideas. Jesus. Hey, he's got a guy, he's got a fascist with a purple sock glued to his face. I don't know, why don't we just listen to him? <laughs> Whirlwind, he seems cool. This robot is mostly face. That's a good look. No one else is doing it. Can you pull it off? You can't. Making bold choices over here. Purple and gold look good together. Let's go. (laughs) Those are feeling colors, Jessica. Come back to the light. (laughs) (laughs) Three different shades of purple and a fur collar. (laughs) It's the fur collar that makes you a villain. (laughs) Um, All right. And then the last one is story arc. 
uh, write a one sentence of something you hope to accomplish on a personal level that does not include solving a mystery. Uh, I want to become a head cheerleader. I want to get my dad remarried. Our examples. Um, to keep my scholarship. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, and the reward for completion of it, of a scene in a story arc, is one free point to define or change a relationship. Okay. Um, and then we didn't really get into town creation, so we will either do that off stream or at the beginning of next episode. Um, but yeah. I think any any more questions before we wrap it up and do some plugs? Um, my drive is somewhere between wants to do right and can't let it go and my story arc is be a bitch in Romeo <laughs> <laughs> I may not be cast as Romeo you can make that call <laughs> depending on whether or not you want me to complete that arc or not <laughs> um, the priest what the hell is this <laughs> I have like one line and I convinced two people to commit suicide how am oh, I no. in this story you best believe that I'm changing the end of that story if that's how it goes hey Julia maybe you don't need this guy huh we're off book we are off book hey you and me but no, you've taken a vow of celibacy. You're no, no, no. Happy dagger pierced me true. Am I right? Let's go. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck pills. They're not good for you, hon. Let's go. Get in my car. You don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I do. It's a Mustang. No. Juliet, do not go with that person. <laughs> I need a lot more yes and from you right now. <laughs> we did that in exercise. Am I right, Mrs. H? Oh, damn it. Deuces. <laughs> I knew I should have never introduced her to yes and. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, questions, comments, concerns before we wrap it up? Oh, a lot of concerns are going to arise between now and when <laughs> sure. we start playing. Sure. From you guys, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. This is... A, and again, we already set out that this is going to be a serious game. And it, you're going to find that whatever this lesbian's name is has some depth. But it's... Well, and we're getting some of the sillies out now. Um, yes. It's yes, still going to sure. be silly, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. Kill a cheerleader in front of me and watch how how quick I become all business. Um, okay. Uh, outros and Cheerleading play. is a dangerous sport. It is it a sport. Is. It's on. It really is, the and they don't get paid enough. I'm fresh angry about it now. Thank you for bringing it up, Andrew. It's, you brought. It up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <outros> and plugs, <laughs> Marty. Yeah, cheerleading is a serious sport. They put themselves in a lot of danger. You, it's not safe to throw yourself a hundred feet in the air, and all of their money is like calendars and appearances. It's a pittance. They get paid under minimum wage. Justice for cheerleaders. We all like them, I guess, is the reason they still exist. Why do they still exist? The important thing is uh, pay them. That's my plug? I, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Cece. Hi, I'm Cece, a.k.a. Soup, a.k.a. Soup's Cut. Uh, I do artwork. Check out my Twitter my Instagram. I just posted a thing that I did for Liz. She commissioned me. It's real cute. You should check it out. It's super cute. Um, Fucking great commissions. Yeah, high five. Whichever side you're on. Uh, I'm in the middle. <laughs> it's it's a different kind of layout. Um, no, yep. you just shoved nothing. <laughs> We're like slamming his Now legs. you're hitting uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'm Andy Hatton at Andy Hatton. Uh, this week is Spell Jammer. Um, come join us for some jams in the spells. It's and Jason's then, face. Yeah. And then next Monday is probably going to be episode one of this. 
And I, for one, am super excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, have a great night, everybody. And also with you. <laughs>